Senator from New Jersey. Thank you, Mr. President, for the recognition. I want to thank my colleagues that are here uh, and for all the work that's been done, not just here in the Senate, but also in the House of Representatives around the Equality Act. I, I want to make this uh, very clear. We, we at this body, uh, you look at history, you, you see that the fundamental equality of all Americans has been denied in so many generations. Women who fought for equality under the law, the right to vote, uh, African Americans who fought for equality under the law, we have seen from our founding are struggling to make real on the promise of this nation, this promise of an ideal that we are all equal under the law. Our founders, these imperfect geniuses, enshrined these ideals. This nation was not founded in perfection, but in aspiration. The very founders themselves referred to Native Americans as savages. It talked about women not being equal citizens. It, it, it denied African Americans full and equal citizenship. Yet these aspirational documents were so profound that every generation of Americans has called to our founding ideals to overcome the inequality that was inherent in our country. Susan B. Anthony calling to the founding documents for her equality and the equality of women. Martin Luther King on the mall calling to that check promissory note, calling that it was time. And here we are in the year 2020, still calling for the full equality of all American citizens when it comes to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender Americans. And I think back to my own family, grandparents and great-grandmother, who would talk about the excuses that were used to deny them equality. There were religious excuses. I'm a big believer in religious freedom. But people sought to deny blacks and whites from marrying. In fact, when Loving v. Virginia passed, the majority of Americans were still against interracial marriage in this country. But somehow, people who were using religion to shield from the fundamental ideals, from establishing the fundamental ideals of this country, we overcame that. These types of reasons were given for the dehumanizing treatment to Native Americans. These kind of excuses were used to justify the segregation of African Americans, but every generation, we fought and we struggled and we came together in multi-racial, multi-ethnic, diverse coalitions to overcome. This week, I was so grateful to see the decision of the Supreme Court, but I was of mixed feelings about it. Why would it take an action of the Supreme Court to justify what already is, equal humanity, equal dignity? Why would it take so long for a country to say, in this nation, the majority of states, cannot discriminate you against you. You cannot be fired just because of who you are. I, I hear the echoes of my own ancestry growing up in a country where children see clearly before them being told and enshrined in laws that are bigoted and biased that you are not an equal citizen, even though when we stand up, in our grade schools, we have to say those words, liberty and justice for all. What does it mean to a child that is denied those things? I, I see us in a country now where we're raising children who are in danger. LGBTQ kids are almost five times as likely as their straight peers to attempt suicide. LGBTQ kids, about 30% admit missing school because of fear for their safety in America in 2020. Black trans women dying at unacceptable, unconscionable rates. I say dying, being murdered. 15 transgender where gender non-conforming people have been murdered. And last week alone, two transgender black women were killed, Dominique Fells and Raya Milton. 
We have work to do in this country to establish the fundamental ideals that have been said from the founding of this country that we will all be equal under the law. The fundamental ideals from the founding of this country that we are a nation of liberty and justice for all. And see, here we are at the crossroads of history, forcing our fellow Americans to come and ask for what is fundamentally theirs already, equal dignity, equal rights. This equality law is too, the Equality Act is too late already. It's too late to do what was foreordained by the very founding of this nation. We are too late already to save the lives of children who've been forced to live in a nation that doesn't recognize their equal dignity. We're too late already to protect the shame of people who've been fired just because they're gay, who have been denied accommodations just because they're gay. The humiliation that I dare say so many in this body know from their families' stories. And so we come here to the floor today to ask for what is overdue, to ask for us to establish in law what is true in the spirit of this nation. to echo the words of our ancestors, great suffragettes, great civil rights leaders, great Native Americans who've all come to this capital to say this is who we are, equal citizens under the law. And so to my colleagues who are with me today, I, I tell you that no matter what happens with this unanimous consent, Justice will come to this country. No matter what person stands against this Equality Act, they stand on the wrong side of history. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Well, it never bends automatically. We need some arc benders. And for too many people in this country, justice delayed is justice denied. And so we will not give up, we will not yield, we will not equivocate, we will not retreat. This will become the law of the land. We have made some steps in the right, right direction of justice, but we are still in the foothills. We have a mountain to climb, but I know we will make it to the mountaintop. I know that this nation will fulfill its promise to its, all of its people and indeed become the promised land. Thank you. I yield the floor.